His name was David Williams. He had dementia. And last Friday, after 82 years of love, family and friendship, he died alone in a hospital bed, but for a nurse holding his hand, whom he barely knew. Just one among thousands, his daughter wanted to tell me, whom she fears forever now being defined as a coronavirus statistic. What we're going through emotionally at the moment is that we couldn't be there for him and we couldn't help him. And that is something that, if I'm honest, I don't think we'll ever, ever get over that. David Williams, or Die Helicopter as he called himself, had been an RAF engineer. He served in Borneo, Libya and Germany, and for the last 11 years was cared for at his home near Pontypridd in South Wales by his wife and two daughters. Everybody that knew him absolutely loved him. Do you know when he cried, he called for me. Um, when he fell, he rang for me. If he wanted to follow a train, he'd, you know, he'd contact me. So I think it's something that we may be sort of that I had more of him in me than, than anybody else. So I think he saw that. Um, so we, we, just, we were just like two pieces of the same genetic puzzle then, I think. Last month, feverish, he was taken to hospital and tested positive for coronavirus. Restrictions meant the family couldn't visit him. They had no further contact. Then in the middle of the night, six days ago, a nurse called to say he was dying. Um, she did us the kindest thing ever and said, what, what does your dad want for his end of life? What can I do that's not in the ward manual that he wants for him to pass away? Um, and that's probably the most kindest thing that anybody's ever done for me in their life to home and for my family. Kerry asked the nurse who was sitting with her dad to mention names of their family to him. And I said he loves dogs. Um, and we'd recently been bereaved with family dogs um, and he still saw them walking around the house. So this was key for him because he'd want to think that they were there with him. And she said, I've got dogs. She said, I can share this from the heart with him. And um, at each of the, the things that she mentioned, family names, he squeezed her hand on every single one, even though he was, you know, passing away. Um, and when she said, I've got two terniers, and explained about them um, and said, you know, all oh, your, your dogs are running around you now. Um, and he squeezed her hand so tight that she said, I was really taken aback. Um, and at that moment, he passed away. What does it mean to you, having had that nurse convey the messages you wanted to convey? Um, everything, really. I suppose it was a diluted version of what he really, really wanted or needed, but that's all we had, that's all we could give him. Um, it wasn't enough for us, and, and hopefully it was enough for him. Dealing with the death of one parent, now trying to protect the life of another. How cruelly familiar that must sound now to so many. Kerry's mum's chronic pulmonary disease means she's high risk and has to self-isolate. So she grieves alone in COVID-19 quarantine, but for care visits from her blue-gloved daughters who can't even hug her. Unable to touch her husband when he most needed it, now deprived in her greatest need of the same. 53 years of marriage. I don't think other than the odd couple of days they've, they've been apart. So the hardest thing the undertaker probably had to say to us, um, and he was quite, you know, sort of upset about it himself, that when a person that has virus that dies, that they have to seal them immediately, which means that we can't go to a chapel of rest to see him. We can't have that, you know, my, my mother can't have that last. And every day this week she said to me, can I go and see him now? And I've had to keep reminding her, you, you can't, he's... He's sealed, you can't have that. So after 53 years, she'll never, ever see him again. So stressed has Kerry been, she tells me she's unwittingly chewed her lower lip into a blister. And now another family joins the rapidly growing number trying to plan a funeral where only 10 can attend and each at two metres distance apart. It, it's a virus funeral. Uh, I mean, you know, that's the, the simple thing is that it's, 
it's, it's like I said, it's like a funeral of the unknown soldier because there'll be hardly anybody there. Um, and, and that's traumatic, I think. Can I just give you my mum's key message, if that's okay with you? So um, I asked my mum to take a few minutes out to think about what she would like to say to people. Okay, ma'am, so what, what key message do you want to give to people? Well, I've just lost the love of my life. And I'd like people to love people, not kill them by going out, because that is what they're doing. Please, please go by the guidelines of the government and keep yourselves and other people safe. Can I ask you, had you been there, what you would have said to your dad? Um, I would have had Glenn Miller on in the background. I would have had borrowed a dog um, from anybody that I could have. Um, and um, I would have sat with him as probably with my mother and my sister. And I think my last words would have been probably blowing him a kiss and saying, no regrets, Dad, me neither. David Williams died in the Royal Glamorgan Hospital on Friday the 3rd of April. One of at least 684 people who'd had coronavirus and died in the UK on that day alone.